The brainstem is a stalk-like projection found in the distal part of the brain, made up of the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Each component of the brainstem has its own unique features and function. As a whole structure, the brainstem allows communication between the cerebrum, cerebellum, and spinal cord, and contains the cardiovascular, respiratory, vomiting, and vasomotor centers, which regulate heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure. The brainstem is responsible for these important functions because it is a passageway for many neural pathways and is home to cranial nerve nuclei. The brainstem begins at the level of the cerebral peduncles anteriorly and the corpora quadrigemina, quadrigeminal plate and tectal plate posteriorly. It ends at the level of the foramen magnum of the skull at the decussation of the pyramids. The midbrain is the most superior and widest part of the brainstem. Below it is the pons, and the medulla oblongata is the most distal and narrowest part of the brainstem. The parts of the brainstem will be focused on in more detail in separate videos. Let's focus on the blood supply of the brainstem. The blood supply of the brainstem is derived from vertebral and basilar arteries. The vascular supply of the midbrain is from the basilar artery and its branches. The major vessels are the posterior cerebral artery and its pedicular branches, the superior cerebellar artery, the posterior choroidal artery, and the interpendicular branches of the basilar artery. Majority of the vascular supply of the pons is supplied by the pontine arteries, which are branches of the basilar artery, and a smaller part comes from the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the superior cerebellar artery. The vascular supply of the medulla is complex and it depends on the level being viewed. In general, the vessels that supply the medulla are the spinal artery, the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, and the vertebral arteries. The rule of four for the brainstem. This is a simplified method that is used to understand brainstem anatomy and brainstem vascular syndromes. So the rules of four is basically everything to do with fours. The first rule is that there are four structures in the midline beginning with M. And these are, so medially in the brainstem, these are the motor pathway, which is the corticospinal tract. You have the medial lemoniscal pathway, and this is your touch, basically, sensation. You have the medial longitudinal fasciculus, which is basically the connection between cranial nerve number six and cranial nerve number three. And then the last structure or thing that is medial is the motor nucleus and the nerves. So medially, all these nuclei here would be your motor nuclei for the cranial nerves. The second rule is that there are four structures in the sides or the lateral aspects of the brainstem beginning with S. And these are the spinocerebellar pathways the spinothalamic pathway, which is your pain, the sensory nuclei of cranial nerve 5, and lastly, the sympathetic pathway. The third rule of the rules of fours is that there are four cranial nerves in the medulla, there are four cranial nerve nuclei in the pons, and then there are four cranial nerve nuclei that are above the pons, and so two are in the midbrain. Above the pons, you have cranial nerves one, two, 
and then cranial nerves three and four are in the midbrain. In the pons, you have cranial nerves five, six, seven, and eight, and they're nuclei. In the medulla, you have cranial nerves nine, 10, 11, and 12, so fours. The last rule of rules of four is that the four motor cranial nerve nuclei that are in the midline are those that divide equally into 12, except one and two. So the four motor cranial nerves are three, four, six, and 12. Cranial nerve five, seven, nine, and 11 are in the lateral brainstem. So again, medially, midline, these are your motor nerve nuclei. So let's try to incorporate the rules of four by looking at some examples. So let's just say there is an old man that comes in with sudden Horner's syndrome on the right. They also have ataxia on the right. They have loss of facial sensation on the right, loss of temperature and pain sensation on the contralateral side of the body in the arms and in the legs. And also they have dysarthria and dysphagia. Well, these constellations of symptoms and signs are caused by loss of blood supply to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, causing what's called Wallenberg syndrome or lateral medullary syndrome. In this example, specifically, it is uh, an infarct caused by the right posterior inferior cerebellar artery. And it causes the following things. Ipsilateral Horner syndrome due to the sympathetic pathway lesion ipsilateral ataxia due to spinocerebellar pathway, ipsilateral loss of sensation of the face due to trigeminal nuclei, which actually extends to the medulla laterally, contralateral loss of temperature and pain due to spinothalamic involvement, and then you have dysarthria and dysphagia due to uh, disruption of cranial nerve 9 and 10. And so it's important, this syndrome is lateral because all the lateral structures are affected hence the constellation of symptoms. So in summary, today we looked at the brainstem, which is a stalk-like projection found in the distal part of the brain. We briefly talked about the anatomy and the three components of the brainstem, the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata, and discussed the blood supply to these areas. We then spent some time discussing the rule of four, which is a method that is used to understand brainstem anatomy and brainstem vascular syndromes and we used a patient scenario to demonstrate how it can be applied clinically. In the upcoming videos, we will further discuss the brainstem by going into detail about its three components, the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Thank you.